Thank you. Good morning, all. Yesterday evening, I realized I have 35 slides and 10 minutes. <laughs> so I saw that yes, and you saw that. So I was prepared for that. Uh, we didn't speak before on that. So that that gives me the opportunity to uh, use the slides as background information, and I, there will be I will use them illustratively later on when I start to make my first first points that I definitely would like to make uh, make first. Um, I was asked to, to, this, to, to introduce the topic and talk more about the challenges, but, but for me the time is not there to talk only about challenges, because we understand the challenges. We've heard the, the excellent introduction from uh, Michiel Kernkamp on, on the figures and some of the impact areas, that's, that's what's known. I've been working on the topic of food waste for over 10 years, and I would like to say we, basically we know sufficiently what we need to know how to act. We need sufficiently of how to monitor and how to work together, and now it's time for the, for the next steps. And that's where I would like to put the five points for challenges that I can see are needed for the next term. And hopefully they can also see, but as being a rapporteur, maybe as, as some, some kind of framework for also to bring back some of these, these messages. When I was working and starting in this area over 10 years ago, nobody was interested in food waste. Nobody. Almost nobody. See what happened in 10 years. That doesn't mean, to my opinion, that we should focus only on food waste. We always need a holistic approach. Food waste is an issue, but it is not the problem. We all, whatever solutions we're going to work on, we need to develop from an holistic approach. We are there to develop a better food system. We are not there only to solve food waste. But what we have seen in the last couple of years, there's so much momentum on the topic and that is probably because nobody is against reducing food waste, be it financially, moral, the environmental aspects, and everybody wastes food, so it's, connected, it's connecting people. It's connecting people on a small scale, larger scale, and that's what we need as a momentum, but think holistically. Not look at food waste as a single individual problem, but link it to the global challenges we have where food is an important aspect, in. link it to the SDGs. The second thing, and that's probably also why the team of this conference is, is, is chosen. We need to address value thinking over efficiency thinking. Because if we look back in, in also history and the way that our food supply chain functions as they are, efficiency has become the leading factor. We need to get back to value and value and repair things that still can be repaired. And that has to do with education, that has to do with including value thinking in gastronomy, but also value thinking, how can we make sure that consumers are ready to pay a good price for decent and good food that is produced in a sustainable way. Very important, I will get back to that with some examples. The third thing is prevention over valorization. We have to distinguish between avoidable, potentially avoidable and unavoidable. But unavoidable is still a resource that can be used to create high value products looking at the food use hierarchy, but prevention is there first. And I think that's important to keep in the back of the mind. But we see a lot of initiatives that focus on reuse on a lower way, first see how we can prevent it, and that's sufficient to be prevented. The fourth one is, I would say, um, yeah, treat the variety and the diversity of nature and use that better. The mission statement of my organization, Wagner University, is to explore the potential of nature to improve the quality of life. That is what we are here to talk about. See what we can learn from nature. And that has to do also with the next step where I see there's, there's much more energy and where we see it all coming together is think circular. From changing to thinking linear, efficiently, we need to think more circular. How can we not only make sufficient food, uses as highly as possible, but also bring it back to the soils where, where we need it. But that also means that some parts of thinking circular needs to be improved, and it's a new paradigm of thinking. And, and that has been mentioned a couple of times, we need to think of new collaborative models. Public-private part partnerships is my favorite one, because this is a topic you cannot solve by yourself, not being a big or small company. Uh, you need the other stakeholders on board. And that's also what we learned in working in European pro programs. I had the privilege to coordinate the first pan-European project and also working on the second one, where public-private partnerships, framework for actions, 
is a central part. And it is all about measuring, setting targets, understanding each other's behaviors, but also looking at the next step to explore how can we improve behavior. But food waste, in my opinion, is mostly behavior related things. Things we can change, but it's not easy because it's more, what is most difficult is to change behavior of people, if being as a consumer of being within, uh, within the business. So we need all the parties on board, but on the other hand, new partnerships are also needed to scale up the positive things that we already see. In the Fusions project, we worked with over 300 uh, social entrepreneurs all across Europe. Some of them have brilliant ideas. We need to show the opportunity how to scale up. But it's also the big businesses involved. They have also done great things. So we are there to see how an ecosystem can be built and can be used on different scale to make further impact and progress. Because what we see in some of the countries that have done work, it is very difficult to create really impact. I know a lot about what's going on in the Netherlands. We have over 100 initiatives and we have no impact. <laughs> we are monitoring that now for seven years in a row. So my, the question is not, do we have the good initiatives? Yes, we have them. But how can we scale up the good initiatives? How can we have more co coordinated ecosystem where these good initiatives can be scaled up, be it adopted by the larger companies? Government look at legislations that, because in legislation we still have a lot of, let's say, perverse incentives in place. In Europe, in Netherlands, we also have to look at those if we want to make progress. That's the five points I want to make, and I want to illustrate that via a couple of slides if it works. Where do I need to put the point? Yeah. Is it done? Can I, can I just try? Like yeah. I did that. But it starts with figures and reliable figures. And we don't have enough of that yet. But on the other hand, we have sufficient information that will help us to understand the main drivers, barriers, etc. Um, and as stressed this morning, uh, already please use the same frameworks, the food loss and waste protocol of what we've produced for fusions as, as, as a framework for nations to report. It's all based on the same principles. And these principles are like and they are acceptable for all. What's not acceptable sometimes is the definition of food waste. But please forget about that. Let's use the frameworks to measure the mass flows of the different systems and create further best practices and interventions on that. What is also known especially in why does it work with you and not with me. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. 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 Also known that three minutes? Yeah, 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 I'll come to that. What we also know in Western countries, as we discussed here, consumers, food service, a little bit of retail, most of the food waste is there, but there is still an underestimate of the amount of food waste in production. But maybe we should not focus too much on that, but get them involved in understanding the topic, understanding more what's also the opportunity for them. Challenges we know, but one of the challenges where we also look at, and that's more in, in, the, in the developing countries, is the, the, uh, the uh, challenge of urbanization. Only Africa, one billion people in the next 30 years, where there will be cities for one million people needs to be built every week for the next 35 years. So that's a major challenge where what we also see, if we look at the trends in, in developing countries, the mega cities, we, uh, uh, it looks like a double burden. They, the food loss problem hasn't been solved yet, and the food waste uh, problem is rising dramatically because consumers, the middle class is rising. They want a lifestyle where food waste is becoming a standard. So we see a huge challenge there that we should not ignore in this global, uh, global challenge. Yeah, that's just it's yeah. Please. Please click up. <laughs> I d you know these, it's but that's the, yeah. that's the interrelation, and we should focus, yes, on sustainable consumption production. Uh, what I only want to say is, please, let's put consumption first. Mm. I'm in science, science area, 95% of my colleagues worldwide, they look and work in production, production improvement, less with, or more with less. We know what we need to do. We knew also how to put that into a li in the right met metropolitan food clusters and how to design that. The knowledge is there, all bring together. Let's focus on the consumption side of it. What is a more preferable food system where we also have to look at what's a preferable diet and how are we going to make the supply chain responsive to that? Circular already mentioned, but there's also an important interrelation between the bio 
circle, the biological circle and the technical circle, where food waste also come into place. We see a lot of examples in technologies where food waste can be used to replace fossil fuel in this technological area. That's an interconnected area where we see more and more can be, can be done in the future. So think circular. And now I would like to do two examples. One example. One yeah, one example, that's, that's, I, w it's, I don't even have a slide on that, that's about education. <laughs> but it has been mentioned a couple of times that education is important and also within the work of Fusion, Selena knows how amazing results can be achieved in short term with improved education. We've done a pilot testing in Greece, working with kindergartens in a playful manner, work and educate young children. And what they did is they brought back the message home. They tried to, they went to re-educate their parents and it had huge impact. This model has now been replicated and some organizations have adopted it, but this should be replicated more. I've tested this with my own children. They are eight years old, so I went to our school and it worked. They brought back home the messages. And that also shows that the basic insights of how to treat food good in a, in a good way is not that difficult. You can train and educate five, six-year-old children understanding what a best before and a use by date means. 50% of European consumers don't know. We can re-educate and use children for that. And there's a lot of tools already available, translated in some, some languages, so please go and, go and use that. The second thing is scaling up. Um, we see over Europe hundreds of initiatives of social innovators who make food of, out of products that would otherwise be wasted. We know it can be done. The next step is scaling it up. I'm behind this initiative where we say, okay, let's go for this next step. So instead of making one or 300 liters of, of products a week, here we produce 10,000 liters a day. And that also makes it possible to respond to retailer needs. So retailers say they want full delivery, they want quality, they want certified. We can do this now in this factory. And the other thing that happened, and that's also what I would like to say is there's not a lack of resources. There's not a lack of surplus food. But if you come with the solutions, companies are willing to bring it to you. Otherwise they say, no, we don't really have food waste. We opened this factory and there was an amazing amount of surplus being offered to this factory. Oh, by the way, we have 10,000 kilograms of this per week. We have a million kilograms of that per week. Amazing good food that now goes to waste. So also organizations are looking for this solution. The last sl slide I would like to show is about healthcare. That's the central team, I think, for also for, for, the, for this, this, this meeting. Amazing results have been achieved with the 15 hospitals that we worked. On average, we started to measure it in 2009, 2010, 40 to 60% of the food in healthcare in hospitals is being wasted. We've been able, with our partners, to bring that back most of the time in 90% with better quality of food, better appreciation of food, saving an average hospital between 100,000 and 150,000 euro a year. And it is all because of bringing back and getting away from efficiency to what is the food really meant for. It's for people also to support in recovery, it's for people to enjoy because it's basically what they, what they have. And the concepts are out there. Just give people at the moment of what they like to eat, to ask them what they would like to eat, give them the choice, ask them where they want to eat with, 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 with other patients, etc., and it worked. In the Netherlands, it's a no-brainer now, because after these 15 hospitals, starting with measurements, starting with awareness, if you don't do it, you lose also your client trust. This should be replicated all over the place, because it gets...